squad leader who coordinates with the driver, the vehicle commander, and the striker's nine-man infantry squad. His station is to the left of the vehicle commander, directly behind the driver. The squad leader's orders are passed down to each striker's infantry by a rifle team leader. This crew member takes his position at the rear of the striker. I'm a rifle team leader, and my job on the striker is usually to be out the back hatch pulling rear air sentry guard, looking out for the six o'clock of the vehicle. So anything comes up behind him, I can relay to the, the driver, the VC, the squad leader, whoever needs to be done. Uh, so the squad leader notifies me of a change in mission, the target, a target location, or anything like that. I look at the screen over here. I mean, we have pictures, day, night, thermal, everything. He points and says, there it is. I relay it to the guys in the truck. They drop ramp, we're out. It, it's just that fast. We're on the ground, and as we often do, we move. The strikers may move or they may not move. They might find cover and concealment. We talk to them so they can let us know where they are, and we let them know where we are. Hold on, you got traffic on the upper. We always have constant communication. To the east on the road, and then there's a gully, and then there's four strikers on a road to... The antennas on this thing, we talk to Pluto. I mean, it's, it's just that good. We talk to everybody about everything, and with the vehicle commander and the driver, they're letting us know where they are, how we can find them, walk us right into the vehicle, drop the ramp, get back on and we're out. This communication between the vehicle and the infantry gives the striker unprecedented capabilities. One of our big uh, areas of training focus is striker integration. What I mean by that is integrate those superb uh, light infantry and their skills with this superb vehicle in open terrain, moving very rapidly in the protection of the striker to your objective. In close terrain, the inf infantry dismount and they help protect the striker. The striker gives them protection as they move from building to building. Uh, it gives them firepower as they move from building to building. And the infantry provide the striker uh, security uh, as the striker moves down the street. On board the striker, the communication system is called the FBCB2, or Force 21 Battle Command Brigade and Below System. Combining text messaging, radio, wireless internet, and satellite technologies, it is among the most advanced communication tools used by the military. The FBCB2 connects each striker to over a thousand other vehicles and computers. What I can do with this system, I have the capability to send messages throughout the different striker vehicles at any time. I can go through it, it'll give me the coordinate, exact coordinate on the map of where that vehicle is, the speed, the elevation of the vehicle, and what type of vehicle it is and who it's carrying. I can go through and I can send different types of combat messages to different people. Saying, hey, you know, we're traveling down this road, there's an IED, avoid this area. Network together, all squad leaders and vehicle commanders can see each other's position, communicate effectively, even if radios go down. In the ICV, the FBCB2 unit is operated by the vehicle commander with display screens that can be accessed by the squad leader. Any soldier in any striker can update the location of friendly and enemy forces, allowing the entire brigade to act immediately on this new information. It allows us to give fast current information, changes to missions, follow on information. So if we have one objective that we hit that leads us to another one, we can immediately carry on to the next objective without stopping. We can reconfigure, re-roll, send everything in route to the next objective, which in the past we'd have to stop, set up maybe 24 to 48 hours later. This allows us continuous operations. Everyone from the commander to the foot soldier has the same picture of the battlefield. The squad leader keeps radio contact and serves as the link between the striker and the infantry. In turn, the striker can relay information to the commanders so they can assess the battlefield and make quick decisions. It's like uh, having a second radio, but it's faster and you can just do so much with it. It's just like having the, the e uh, internet, <laughs> email system on the truck. Uh, you can send warnings out with it. It's like having a map, a radio, a total package. I can go ahead and type a message and plot the bad guys on there. If I ran into an obstacle, I can plot it on the map. So it's, it's just an awesome tool. 
Connected through this secure network, strikers constantly update each other on enemy positions. And when they encounter hostile fire en route, the vehicles are equipped with a powerful suite of weapon systems. Inside the striker, the vehicle commander aims and fires weapons remotely using a joystick and a targeting screen. One of the most dependable and widely used weapon systems is the M250 caliber machine gun. Capable of firing 550 half-inch diameter rounds per minute, the 50 cal can effectively engage enemy targets at distances up to 2,000 meters, or a little over a mile. For bigger and more obscured targets, the gunner's mount can also be equipped with another reliable army workhorse, the Mark 19 automatic grenade launcher. Its one and a half inch barrel fires 60 rounds per minute, hitting targets within a 50 foot swath and piercing enemy armor up to two inches thick. With Mark 19, we use that more as an indirect uh, weapon. Say somebody's in a trench system or somebody's on the back side of a building or on the back side of a wall. We'll generally lob the rounds over the wall if we can to uh, get a better effect than using the direct fire of the M250. All strikers have a potent array of weapons. But no hardware can substitute for the vehicle's greatest asset. The most lethal thing about a striker is a nine-man infantry squad that comes out the back. Uh, to dismount and take the fight to the enemy in close combat. In combat, the striker is unmatched at getting the soldier to the fight quickly and safely. For the 3rd Brigade, training takes place in the desert of Yakima. A team of soldiers from the 2nd Infantry Division is about to undergo initial troop level training. Once boots hit the ground, dismounted infantry must know how to quickly and effectively sweep any potential enemy structure. For soldiers in training, this means a lesson inside the shoot house. This is where soldiers learn to move and act while firing in close proximity. Up on you, all right? you got it? I got security, go, clear. The building is called the shoot house. It emulates different scenarios that you may find uh, in and around the battlefield. The facility allows you to have 360 degree range fan inside of the building. Walls of compressed rubber blocks absorb live rifle bullets, while a catwalk above gives training officers a commanding view of the exercise. All right, coming in. As soon as you see that target fellow, you are authorized to shoot it, okay? You don't have to wait until you are actually in the room. Okay, coming through the door, you should have your muzzle, your gun up, all right, put two in them, and continue to scan your sector. And then you go hot, all right? Okay, practice that guy. That guy is the guy that's hurting you guys, right? Okay, make it happen. For the newer recruits, the lessons are invaluable. We're getting the newly assigned soldiers to the company, They're used to firing in close proximity of other soldiers. It builds trust, uh, teamwork, in a controlled environment. In the shoot house, soldiers learn how to work as a team, rehearsing commands as each man covers his own sector of the room. The use of live rounds keeps the training real, teaching the soldiers to concentrate despite the noise and smoke. For the third striker brigade, Training in the shoot house prepares them for the unpredictable nature of war. It just depends on the day in Iraq, what you're going to do. We don't know if uh, when we kick that door in, if they're friendly or if they're hostile. So it's really tricky. We did a lot of raids in Iraq. We know where someone lives. We go to their house, break the door down and go snatch them. 